If it's the first time we've been arrived, I'll just tell you a little bit about it. Um, we've been going for a couple of years now. And it gives people like ourselves the opportunity to hear what some of our staff are very cool people are doing in the community. And um, we kind of have a little interview, a little chinwag. And uh, generally, just find out what they're up to. And being International Women's uh, Day yesterday, we thought we'd do an International Women's Day special. Our next guest is from a world that you're familiar with. Indeed. She used to wake us up in the morning on the now defunct Choice FM. She's gone on to be quite possibly our top female presenter. She said on the carpet. Oh, okay. In radio. In radio. She hosts the number one drive time program in the UK for possibly the past six or seven years. I know you know very well. Put your hands together and welcome the lovely Angie Reese. Love him, love him, love him. But let the man rest. 
Freddie McGregor charted with Just Don't Wanna Be Lonely. Sugar Miner charted with Good Thing Going. Do you see what I'm saying? There's, you know, Boris Gardner. There are a number of other artists from the Caribbean diaspora who charted. And I think sometimes, you know, if we could just open it up a little bit. Um, I love One Love. I love Jemin. But Bob did sing a lot of songs. You know what I mean? A lot of songs. I mean, you, you kind of fell into broadcasting, really. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you was you started out capital, yeah. Um, yeah. as a what secretary. Yeah. And from there, uh, what happened? Was somebody off one day and he said, "No." What, what happened? Um, capital was. It was 1980. It was quite some time ago. And they were floating to go on the stock market. And um, I was working. It was so long ago. It wasn't HR. It was all personnel. Mm, that's that so long ago. ago. Yeah. And um, it was just we, we had a lot of work to do because we had our own work to do. And then in the evenings we were preparing for this float. And I was just taking a mickey out of somebody in the voice of Manny from Gone With The Wind. And David Jensen and Lynn Parsons and a guy called Jeff Wren, they were behind the door, killing themselves laughing and said, you need to record that. So I recorded it and they started using it, using my voice to do jingles. And my voice, and I wasn't a paid voiceover at the time, I was just happy to go, oh my God, there's my voice on the radio. Ooh. But then my eldest brother from Barbados, who lives in Barbados, said to a guy at Liberty, which is a station in Barbados, I ain't got a sister at Capital Radio, you know. <laughs> but didn't say that I was a secretary. And I was going for a three week holiday in Barbados. And he said, Angela, bring some records. <laughs> radio in Barbados, I did not know what I was doing, I didn't know what I was saying, and I was glad it was in Barbados, because you know what I mean? But that's when I got the bug, that's when I got the bug, and that's when I noticed that bar, at the time, Steve Barnard, um, Robin Rob, well, not Robin Vincent, um, Tony Williams, yeah. where, where is, where are we? And that's what I noticed. And as much as I would love to get my records, records, as much as I'd love to get my choice of music and go and play on the radio, the chances are that it's not going to happen unless I do a special show like myself. But I just felt that we needed a presence. And this was back in the early 90s, because it, it wasn't there. So did you manage to get on there at Capital? Not at Capital. Um, I did a lot of voiceovers there, and I really did enjoy that. Um, I did a lot of producing there, produced John Sachs, Peter Young, Chris Tarrant, I, I've done it all. Um, but then I left to go to Spectrum, which was a multicultural station on air. And I said to the then um, program controller, Richard Park, you will employ me again. And he said, please, I really don't think so. Yeah, <laughs> you understand? But he did. For 25 years, I mean, shh.
Let's work in all areas. Did, did they view you as a danger at uh, LBC? Because you like speech radio. Oh, gosh. And more than music. More than music. Yeah. And, and you had a quite successful show yeah. on LBC. Yeah. Did they view, do you think they viewed you as a bit of a dangerous? I don't know if dangerous is the right word. It was definitely refreshing. <laughs> Please elaborate. Well, and I'm just going to say it as it is. I have a lot of time for Vanessa Feltz on BBC London. I think she's a great radio broadcaster. But I'm not sure, as a Caribbean woman, how it would be embraced if I were to do a phone-in about the Jewish community. And I say that with professionalism. I'm not digging or anything. But I did feel at times that the door could be opened just a little bit more for us to bring our culture over on the airways without talking about musical cooking. Nothing wrong in musical cooking. Why can't we talk about problems in education amongst black boys? I was talking to my daughters on the way here, we were having a, a little joke, and I just feel that there are systems in place, and we know that young black boys are not going to have the openings, or as many openings, as other cultures. So why can't we talk about that? On FM, on DAB, why has it got to be on the internet? Why has it got to be kept back? <coughs> it's all just as though, I must not say that. I mean, even just now in explaining, I don't want to be rude, I'm being professional. It's almost like we've got to be, we've got to tiptoe and be a bit apologetic. That's why I don't understand that. Change, it? No, no, it hasn't changed, it hasn't changed. Which is, and it's really sad because having been on Magic for nine years, it amazes me when I go into the studio and clients walk in and they go, when's Angie coming in? <laughs> I know, I'm here. <laughs> but we got to just, you know, bite the bullet, stand up around and just, just keep going. You've interviewed a lot of people. Absolutely. Who, who, who gave you most thrill? Um, all right, the, the, the interview that will always come to mind and probably had the most impact was Jesse Jackson, which was about six weeks before I left Choice in 1997. The year before, I'd been to a Progressive Baptist conference in Atlanta, and he did his speech, very, very charismatic, and then the journalists went off into a room, and you know, they said, you put your hand up, blah, 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 and I put my hand up, and I said, oh, excuse me, Mr. Jackson, you from England? I said, yeah, because they, at that time, didn't think any of us were here, but anyway. So he said, I'll deal with you later. And I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> and then at the end of the press conference, he just went, he came straight down the aisle and just shook my hand and just said, we need to connect. You've interviewed many, many people. How many times have you heard that? Yeah, well, yeah. You, you know the difference. Sometimes it's right. like the same thing. Well, I, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. But about a year later, he was coming to London, and I got a phone call um, saying, you know, he's coming in, he wants to meet you, can you give him an hour on choice? And as far as I was concerned, there was no discussion. It had to happen. It had to happen. Um, I still got the cassette. <laughs> <laughs> Not MP3. No, I need to put it on MP3. But to this day, there are still, you know, people that still say, I can remember that morning, and I can remember being late for work because I sat in the car because I had to hear it. Because we'd never had anything like that. And it was really important to have that. Who would you say has been your greatest mother of society, influence and inspiration? Um, in terms of a media mogul, it's got to go. Yeah. <laughs> because I think even with her start, the way she then progressed, to give up her network show and to purchase a digital network, you know, the woman is unstoppable and good luck to her. And we need her over here. Yeah. Oh, that was on the option there. Never say never. Nothing is impossible. There's, <laughs> there's somebody halfway there. If that's the standard answer, we all give to him a bit. But nothing is impossible. Well, we've had a 
nothing is impossible. And I mean, I don't know about you, Brenda. I, well, did you always want to be a TV presenter? Are you involved? Not, not, not initially. I, didn't. Right. I just kind of wanted to get it. When I got to television, I just happened to be that. I thought I'd be a producer, and I worked towards okay. being a producer, and then was thrown in front, and then thought, actually, this ain't a half bad. And you see the power that influence you can have mm. for your own, and you realise how important it is to be there. So yeah. that's kind of. Well, if anyone said to me, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if anyone had said to me, I would have that, that, that messing around and doing that impression of Manny from Gone with the Wind, if anyone had said to me, 20 odd years later, you'd be the most listened to drive presenter in London, I'd have said no way. So I, have, I, I look at doors that have opened, a lot of which have had nothing to do with me. Because you know, London, went to Atlanta, met Jesse Jackson, and then he ended up on choice. So that's just, you know, checkmate. He got me, and yeah, come along. Um, I, I would always, I always look at how things come together as well. Um, I run a book club on magic. You say Bolt wrote a book. Um, the publishers explained the procedure. And it was all up and down, up and down, up and down, anyway. For whatever reason, I didn't get the interview. And I can remember thinking, you know what? what will, whatever will be, will be. I remember, I think I said to you, one day I'm going to be in, my, in uh, Jamaica, or, you know, my husband, and he's just going to walk past, and I'll get my interview, or I'll get my photo. And one specific day, the girls came home from, work, from school early. Don't know why. Uh, my eldest, Morgan, said, Mom, can I go to my mates? Yeah. Candy said, Mom, can I come to work with you? Yeah, all right. Got off the train, went to Mark's, did some shopping, walked up to Magic, and there's a there's, there's little. So I said to the receptionist at the time, Shirley, lovely lady, I said, who's upstairs? She went, you say, oh, I'm mean, all right then. She said, you better get your blood done. <laughs> Food 
that's poison. <laughs> um, and there's a book club on there as well because I will always remember just picking up Acts of Faith yeah. and reading it in the mornings. And, and I've never lost that bug for promoting books. Um, and yes, I do have a good relationship with a lot of the publishers through the book club on magic, but there's a lot of books, a multitude of books that we haven't even got the tip of the iceberg. And they're the kind of books I want to promote on Feeding the Fab. I'm also going to be a people, so I need an interview with Edna, and I need an interview with um, And I just, just want to bring a, a, a bit of a positive platform online. Okay, darling. Wish to hear more from you later? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you.